Welcome to my wife's sewing studio. I've got a nice black backdrop behind me, so hopefully you can see me nice and clearly. Okay, so we're going to talk today about a basic Firebase. We're going to use a node client. We're going to create a Firebase client, and I'll, let's do that right now. Let's start off. We're at firebase.google.com. Okay, and you can read through here. This is their splash page. It's got all the little details on how people use Firebase, but we're already sold on Firebase. So we're gonna go straight to the console. Okay, jump to the console. Now in the console, we'll see all of our projects and I, here are my projects. Each one, each one of these projects it equates to a Google Cloud Storage project as well. So let's say, let's start on Quiver 2 here. There will also be a, a Google Cloud, sorry, a Google Cloud project called Quiver 2 as well for quiver2.firebaseao.com. So create a project. Pretty easy. You give it a name. You select your region. Okay. You click through. Here we go. All right. What do we get on our Firebase project? First off, we can switch through projects through here. Got the docs. We can switch sign out. Here's our here's our home page. Okay. Got little cards for every different service that Firebase provides. And we have add Firebase to Android app, add Firebase to iOS, and the one we're interested in, add Firebase to your web app. Now this will create API keys and give you all the details you need to serve up your Firebase. Okay, so in this case, this is my API key right here for my client. Uh, this is a public API key, so you can have it. You can use it. You'll see it in any app you hit on quiver2.firebaseapp.com. Okay, so this is how we add it to our browser. Got it. Okay, but we're going to try to skip the browser stuff and try to jump straight into Node. Uh, the, once you get it configured, Node is really similar to the browser. So let's just use Node and try to simplify this as much as possible. Okay, so we've got some tabs, we've got analytics. I don't really use analytics, um, not yet. That's a new feature. We're gonna focus on, in this course, auth, database, storage, and hosting. Remote config, test lab, crash, those are mostly Android, iOS. Um, notifications, dynamic links, same thing. AdMob is AdMob. I'm sure you could use AdMob for web, but I have not and don't really expect to. Okay, so let's say the auth tab. We have users. We can create users. We can control our sign-in methods, enable different methods, enable different domains. Um, create email templates for password reset, address verification, address change, okay. Database, this is where most of our data lives. You've got the root database that you're looking at. So right here, I'm looking at curvy2firebase.com. If I open that in a new tab, well, look at that, it's the same. It'll, it'll just refer me back to the same console tab I had before. So what I really want to do if I want to see it is add a .json to the end and check it out. It'll all be .json. Now I'm using a, a, a JSON display plugin for Google Chrome. Uh, you'll probably want one of those if you're going to look at JSON in a browser in Chrome. I would not recommend it any other way. Uh, I think, let's see what mine's called. Yeah, there we go, extensions. JSON view, I use JSON view. So use JSON view to get these nice, pretty little formatted JSON strings. Okay, so this is my data structure that I've got just sitting in Quiver 2. All right, okay, that's that. Now we can, we can do some more stuff. We can, let's say, let's make a new, add some data, let's say demo. Oops. 
some node. Name Chris. Bam. Get it? Demo some node name Chris. I can go all the way down to here and check it out. I can look at this particular node. I can come here, copy that, added that JSON to it, and check it out. I get Chris. Just the string Chris. If I come up a, pat a little bit, I can sort of navigate up and down that. Okay. So there's some fun there. Uh, next, we got storage. Storage, uh, I can upload files to storage. These are some files I've uploaded. You can upload them manually. You can upload them via the web client. We've got an SDK for that. You can upload them to the, the uh, Google Cloud Storage bucket that backs this using Node, using Go, using PHP, using Java, using whatever you like. Um, G uh, Google Cloud Storage has its own SDK and you can just interact with it directly there. But if you'd like to interact with this bucket via the, um, the Firebase SDK, you can do that in a browser or iOS or Android, but we're not going to cover those. We're going to stick to the browser because that's what I understand. Okay, so hosting. I'm not hosting anything yet, but you can host your static files and we will eventually host our static files right here and that'll I mean npm install firebase tools we can go through that later okay pretty straightforward actually this is one of the easier parts of firebase okay but let's get started with the database first what do we need to access the database with node let's make a folder so I'm gonna say make dir let's call this node client cd node client okay nothing in here let's npm init and yeah we're just gonna dive right through all that we don't need any of this crud great yes that's great okay got a package.json now we're gonna npm install let's see we're gonna want save firebase yes perfect Save Firebase. Let's open that up in VS Code. All right, we got our node modules. We got our package.json with Firebase. Let's make a file. Let's call it index.js. Why not? Okay, npm oh, var Firebase equals require Firebase. This a little bit bigger. Okay. Next, let's make sure our security rules are good. We're going to say, we're going to call this, let's get rid of this extra node and let's call this new node we're going to work under, let's call it node client. Right now we're just going to be just true. Just so you see, we got a node there called node client. I'm going to go over here to rules. I'm going to say anyone, no, no, you know what? Let's not have read write for the whole world. Let's do node client. We're going to address this particular node. We're going to say dot read. true dot write false now that means that no client will be able to write to this node besides our client which is going to be our sort of super user a fully authenticated server um, which can write anywhere it wants to so let's publish these rules oh, oh it doesn't like that what did I miss oh yeah it's a little a little strange. Did we publish? Good. Rules published? Okay, we're in. Okay, so we've, we've got this node client node now. Anyone can read it, so we can just read it right off of um, right off of the REST JSON API if we want to and check that at REST API using .json and we can write to it as well. Okay, so 
There's our data. Now, to use the Node client, we're going to need a Google Cloud API key. So let's go to cloud.google.com. All right, let's jump to the console. You won't have to go here very often. There we go, let's hop to Quiver 2. This is the matching project. You really have to match your projects. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you create an API key for the wrong project, it's really not gonna work. <laughs> so, all right, let's go. You can get to it via the side, right over here, API Manager, or you can pin it and get to it via this. All right, API Manager. Now credentials, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to black out a bunch of credentials that I don't want people stealing. These are some credentials you're not supposed to steal from me. These are the service account keys. These are the real deal. This gives you full access to everything. So to do this, we're gonna create a credential. Create a credential, a service account key. We're going to, hey, make a new service account. We're gonna call it node client. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Fantastic. We're going to create this. We're going to download it. Awesome. Now we have a JSON file. All right. JSON file. There's a JSON file. I now need to navigate to my oh, node client. There we go. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna copy it over here. Now, once you create one, you get to download it once, you don't get to download it anymore. You gotta save it or you know, get rid of it and create new ones. So I don't like this long, messy name, so I'm gonna call it service account or quiver to, to service account.json. All right, and now just to make sure we don't check this in somehow, it's always really good practice, not that I'm gonna check anything in, but to add a get ignore. And say, you know what? We ignore everything with service account.json. Because if you check this in, people will steal your stuff. Of course, we're gonna ignore node modules as well. All right, nothing special there. Okay, so now I got access to our service account. Beautiful. Okay, don't need any of this anymore. Okay, hop over here. Now, we're gonna need to initialize our app. So, firebase.initialize app. Let's see, if I can remember correctly, it's service account. Quiver to service account.json. So you got to pass in the path to the service account. I mean, it's got to be anywhere in your system. You can, you know, save your service account files all, you know, all in one folder and just reference them from your root directory. But I'm going to just do it from the local. Um, we're all just going to need a database URL. Tell it what to connect to. And that should just be right here. All right, we're gonna find out in a second whether this works or not. All right, so now that Firebase is initialized, let's say var ref, so the core ref to my Firebase is going to equal firebase.database dot ref. And you know what? I can get this ref and just get the, let's see, ref dot once value dot then function snap. This stands for snapshot. All right, console log out snap dot val snap dot val. And I'm gonna set up, I, I've already run node install g nodemon. Nodemon is 
a node daemon, the daemon runner, it will run your node for you like node, but it will rerun it every time anything in the folder changes. So instead of just running node index, we're gonna run nodemon, nodemon index, and it'll run it. Check that out. Hey, provide authentication credentials are invalid. This usually indicates your Firebase app was not initialized correctly. Make sure your API key and database URL match the provided values. If you're using a service account, make sure it's authorized to access the specific database URL and is from the correct project. So, <clears throat> that was embarrassing. So we've got true. That's our value for this ref node client. Now, if I get rid of this and save it, check it, it'll read out the whole data structure that I've got up above there, everything. It can't really, doesn't have any ability to skip. So we're gonna, we're gonna say, we're gonna build off of, now we can do ref and add children here. We can say dot child um, node client like that. It's exact same thing. This is how we will dig into our references. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just gonna just keep this first ref. I'm gonna say node client just to make it clear, we're working off the node client all the time. All, all child, all children of this guy will, will do the thing. Okay, they'll all stem off of node client. Okay, so we've set up a security rule. We've set up our basic server. We've shown that we can pull the data. Now let's save some data. So how about we do, I don't know, for var i equals zero i less than ten i. Plus plus. We're gonna say, how about we do var messages ref equals ref dot child messages. We'll just call it messages. We could do messages. How about we do some path messages just to make it really clear how arbitrary the nesting is in Firebase. We can nest however we like. We can go like 32 deep, even though that's ridiculous and you'd never really want to do that. It's possible. Okay, so messages ref, ref chat child, some path messages, awesome. So we've got a bunch of different options for saving our data. Let's start off saying messages ref dot push. We're gonna say text some text count will be I. So we're just gonna make that explicit. Okay, now I want to do something here. I want to push it all and then I want to wait. I want to wait for all the pushes and then run a query when I'm done. So check this out, var promises. We make an array of promises, okay? Push returns a promise. So I can say promises.push. So I'm gonna push the push promise onto the promises array. All right, so now promises is gonna be an array full of promises. So I can say promise.all promises. Check that out, dot then function. All right, so when all those guys are done, so first it's gonna run through here, it's gonna collect all the promises from all the push operations. And messages ref is gonna push a new object, text with count i, um, do this 10 odd times. And then when it's done, promise.all will say, hey, it's all done, call the dot then. Then we're gonna say ref dot once value. dot then function snap console dot log snap dot val because we just want to read the whole thing out um yeah awesome so let's save this and watch it run there blah 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 some path messages object okay so there's not a lot of you can't read the whole thing out very easily I'm not going to worry about pretty printing it but check this out no client some path messages 
And look at these crazy keys right here. It created what, what we call push keys. It created a bunch of them, probably 10. Um, these keys are, they sort alphanumerically. So see, count zero, count one. This is sorted alphanumerically right now. So they, they sort like timestamps, but they're not actually timestamps because if you had timestamps, the timestamps would all collide. Everybody using your app would all try to be pushing to the same timestamp at the same time. That'd be ridiculous. So these push keys are generated in, I mean, in by the SDK. Every time you call dot push, it creates a new reference. Now, if you pass an object into dot push, it then automatically saves that object against the reference. If you don't, you just get a reference back. So I call dot push and I pass an object in, so it saved the object. And it and that, that reference has a new key that's created off of the millisecond timestamp at which the uh, reference is created. It also adds a whole bunch of randomness into it and creates this crazy string. So these are what we call push keys. So work off of these push keys. Uh, you never want a zero index array in Firebase. You never want zero, one, two, three, four, five. You don't want to be managing your, your indexes. You don't want to be managing your list values. That's what push keys are for. Push keys let a million people use the same Firebase at the same time and push to the same lists without collision. It's a glorious thing and there's no reason to fight it. Um, just really use push keys. If you're thinking about multiples of something, lists, collections, you want to use push keys. You don't want to fuss around with other stuff. Okay, so these are the push keys. You can see how they all read out so nicely all the way through number nine. So zero through nine. We got this basically a zero indexed zero through nine. But we got push keys. Okay, cool. Now let's see, what else can we do with this to make it a little more interesting? Now we've run this and I've created them. I don't want to make these again. So we're just going to comment this out. Um, and just push this to the bottom. I don't want to, I don't want to remake this. So let's see. Now let's look at different ways of querying this messages ref. Let's start off with, well, no, no. Before we query, let's, let's make some more changes. No, no, we got to, okay, we got to query before we make changes. Okay, so let's do messages ref dot once value dot then. We've already done this a couple times. Snap, this returns a data snapshot. All right, now I would like to really walk you through this here. Okay, I'm going to walk you through this using VS Code's um, little runner. So check this sucker out. We are going to go to debug, debug in node. Awesome, index.html. So we, want, we this, with this debugger, we just have to make sure that works. That's the index.js, we matched it. It figured us out. So we click run. Oh, hey, there we go. Okay, we're here. Now let's, let's expand this a little bit so we get a little more screen real estate. All right, all right, so what is this snap? Let's inspect the snap. Snap, what is on our snap? Okay, it's not gonna show us a lot, but we've got snap dot, we've got some, some, some nice things here. Snap dot key, messages. Okay, so we can call snap dot key, get that. We can call snap dot ref and get the ref itself. So this is the underlying reference, the messages ref. It'll be the same as messages ref, which we don't have available because we're within a, a scope in the debugger. Okay, so we've got snap.ref, we've got snap.key, and we've got snap.val. This is very nice. It gives us this whole object. Notice these things don't sort. Um, you've got the one that ends in 0b here, the one that ends in hb here. That's not sorted. You can't sort an object in JSON. Objects don't sort. Arrays sort, but objects don't sort. If you want to sort this, you need to change it into an array of some sort, and then you can sort it. Okay. Um, but what you can do, it's very nice, is you can do something like, check this out. We've got snap.for each. That is a function. Now look at this. We're going to get rid of this and say snap.for each child snap. All right, now we're going to console.log the 
child snap dot key and then the child snap dot val. All right. Now let's restart the script. All right. Do, 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 do. Check it out. We logged it out. And in this case, in the for each, it did it with the correct order. So check it out. It did 0bhbsu. Zero 0bhbsu. Zero count 0 through 9 with our dummy text. So that's awesome. Now, if we were to run this again, let's just run it one more time. We'll notice that this child snap, it's a snap just like any other. Child snap dot key dot ref. I mean, so by using snap dot for each, we can go walk through the children of a collection. Super useful. I mean, yeah, you could just call the val off of it and walk through the keys like uh, manually. Like you could have said snap dot. You could you say like child snap dot val, right? Count. You could say you could you know get the keys off of that object dot keys, and you could loop through the object and, and do it manually. But why? When you've got a big list of things, let's use snap dot for each and walk through and actually get the snapshots for the children, which we can then use all the fun stuff to then manipulate the data. Okay. So, I mean, snapshots are great. So we got this child snap. Um, we can call dot two string on it. What happens when we call two string? Oh, it's an object. Let's call ref dot ref dot two string there. So this shows us node client, some path messages. This is the string. This is the path to this child snap. But check it out. I can call dot parent dot ref dot two string. Nope. Sorry. 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 Ref dot parent. There we go. So ref dot parent. So from a ref, I can call just dot parent, and I can walk up the path. Parent dot parent. Look at that. Let's call dot child. Let's get back down to messages again. Now let's just say you know what gobble the gook so now i've got a reference to node client some path some slash path slash gobble the gook you can you can navigate however you like and save data wherever you like okay so i can then call i mean check this out i can call dot set and pass in an object right here say true or name true okay look i just called it <laughs> what happens when you come up to path here do i have path messages or path gobbledygook is that a thing now let's check it out come on some path messages okay so it didn't actually it didn't actually run. Huh. All right, that's interesting. Anyway, let's 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 move on from here. So let's stop this. Okay. So just I'd like to show a couple more ways. First off, instead of once value, let's do on value. On value will fire multiple times. It'll fire every time anything changes underneath the underneath the object. So you can keep an object just in sync with your local memory. So I'm going to say function snap here all right and get rid of all this then stuff because only once happens once therefore it's a promise it can use dot then uh the, the value callback i mean it could fire you know forever so you don't you don't pass it's not it doesn't return a promise it takes a callback so we're going to say console.log snap.val okay great so messages ref console.log snap.val now we can we can run this again, and you'll notice you know, nothing there. It, it's going to run once. It's going to return all the data the first time. Okay, so it returns all this data. Well, now let's go in here and let's add another message. New true. Look, oh hey, it returned it all a second time. So it returns all the data every single time. Now if I go to new over here and I get rid of it, oh check it out, it's going to return the data again. Um, if I come in here and say some text, 
is now different. I mean, it did it again. Didn't show you very easily though. So let's let's just remove that and fire it off with just add a period there. So it'll it'll keep it in sync at all times. So that's what on value does. So now let's change this to on child added. Okay. Refresh this. So now instead of listening to value, listening to child added. Child added fires a separate time. So it gives you a different snapshot for every object and it respects the order. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now if I come over here and I and I just reduce this back down to some text where it was before, do I get it? Do I get something? No. I, I really don't. Now let's add a message to it though. New message. There we go. So we get the new one there. Now let's get rid of it. Do I get anything? No, I don't. Nothing happens. Okay. So if we want to get, if we want to get removals, we listen to child removed. All right. Let's refresh this. All right. So this isn't going to fire at all. I'm going to add one. Yes. True. I'm going to add a child. Now I'm going to remove it. And there you go. You get true. So the value for the child is true. Now let's, now what if I add some node? Oh gosh, can't spell. And I add some children to it. Um, child node true. All right. Just make it, make it dumb and simple. Okay. Nothing happens there. Let's add another node. Second node, false. Okay, second node. Now, if I delete this, it's not a direct child, so you don't see anything here. So this is only going to fire. Child removed will only fire when a direct child of the ref, in this case, some path messages, messages, a direct child is removed. Same for added. Child added is only when a direct child is added. But child added is different because it fires once for every existing child first. So as soon as you instantiate, it fires once for everything and then continues to fire. Later on, when we do queries, we'll do these limit queries where it'll only say only fire for the most recent 10. And that'll let you treat your data like a stream. So you can use child added very effectively to just stream data into your browser. I mean, you could have a million records, but you're only going to deal with 10 at a time. It's uh, actually an alternative to pagination and can allow your app to scale very, very nicely. Okay. So what else have we got? Child changed. Child change. Let's run, run this again with child change. It'll only run on a child change. So let's say child node, we're going to change it. We're going to say second node because I'm not feeling very amazing. Okay. Luke Skywalker. We're getting Star Wars -y again. Oh, there we go. A child changed. So what do we get? We get a snap. Snap.key is some node. Snap.val child node Luke Skywalker. So we just get the new snapshot of the child that has changed. It's pretty easy. Okay, let's let that play. Now we can go in here and say some text has changed for count number four. And come on. Oh, we didn't get it. We didn't get it because it didn't like what I had. Eh, the runner failed. Okay, let's run it again. Some checks has changed again. You know, VS Code, it's got a great no debugger, but it's still a little buggy sometimes. Sometimes it'll just, you know, it'll just stop. It doesn't keep listening. There we go. Okay, count four. Some text has changed again. Okay, so that's that's pretty straightforward. Um, there's also this, something, this thing called child moved. Um, I don't actually want to cover it. I've never used it. It refers just purely to changes in priority which is actually something that Firebase is moving away from. Uh, every node can have a priority set on it. Um, yeah, why don't we, I mean, you can say, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to cover priority because that's just confusing. Now, you don't need to use priority, <laughs> okay? So yeah, that's, 
that's the basis of getting and querying data and saving data in Firebase. Oh, you know, before we go, let's let's change let's change things just a little bit. So child added, it'll fire once for everyone, right? So let's say child added, we got our snapshot. Let's say update red update. We're gonna say. Ooh. Ha. <laughs> Red on new date dot to string. Okay. All right. So let's run this again and see what happens. <laughs> Maybe this fails. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, yeah. It doesn't like it. Snap dot update is out of function. Oh, of course it's out of function. Snap that updates out of function. It's snap dot ref dot update. There we go. Okay. So snap dot ref dot update. Look at that. So it'll update as it each one gets called. So every child added event calls for the child added. Uh, I get the snap for everyone individually. Call dot ref on it and say hey read on is that. Okay. Now that's great. I can also say set. I can say, how about child, new, child, <laughs> dot set, some date. All right. Run that again. So instead of calling update and passing in just the key I wanted to update, now I'm calling a child and calling dot set and that whole object will then get blown away a new child will become some dates just to prove that this how this works another date if i do this it'll blow it away so new child some date will actually go away so update will just update the keys that you pass in set will blow the whole object away and replace it with something new okay so set is actually really obvious it just blows the thing away resets it as many children as you have, they go away and they get replaced with the object you just passed in. That's not nearly as interesting as update. Update is really cool. Update will actually let you do simultaneous stuff. So I can say update. I can pass in a string. So I can say update new child date one. Or ah, let's say number one. So I'll be number one, and I can update um, read on to be this date again. All right. So now I'm gonna. Oh, you know, let's just, let's just make a new one while we're at, at it. Some other other child just to make it really obvious um what we're doing some number some boolean let's see if this works true let's see if boolean can be a key name all right let's run it again let's see what happens over here we're running and bam new child it updated another date and updated no updated number another date still there it just did the update didn't didn't blow it away number one and some other child some boolean true okay now check this out now instead of some boolean true we're going to say some boolean null okay run it again and some boolean null nope and since there's no child it deletes all the path preceding it so Firebase will let you update, do these multi, they're called multi-path updates. You can update any child you like, no matter how deeply nested, by using slashes in the key of your update, update object to dig down to that object, to that node. Um, you can also pass in a null object, or just, sorry, null object. The, the, you set it to null, it'll go away. And of course, Firebase, will create as much path as it needs to, as many um, as many bits of the tree as it needs to, to create that 
deeply nested object. And it will, if you get rid of all of the, the, the base node and there's no data to save, it'll get rid of all the parent nodes. So once Boolean's gone, some and some other child have to be gone too. But to save a new Boolean, I can say, hey, true this time, it'll save some other child node, the sum node, or the Boolean node, and just build itself out as needed. Firebase stays as sparse as possible at all times. It doesn't store nulls. So if you set something as null, it just goes away. Now let's see what happens if we set it as undefined. Actually, I've never tried this before. Let's find out. Does it throw some horrible error? Yes, it does not like undefined. Never try to set something as undefined in Firebase. It will just hate you. But null, null counts. It respects null. It knows that null means go away. There we go. Oh, also, don't try to set it as some sort of function. Just don't set it as a function. Like you can try this and you'll you'll do it on accident. You'll be like saving some big JSON object because there'll be a function stashed in there somewhere. And you'll go, oh yeah, it contains a function and property, path messages, whatever. Yeah, that's equally ridiculous. Uh, it doesn't save functions. You can save the string of a function. Here, you can, <laughs> okay. If you really want to save a function, say console.log, hey guys, dot to string. So this, this ought to work actually. I should be able to save this string function. There we go. So I could, in theory, get the function and eval it if I wanted to. Ridiculous, but you know, anything's possible. Okay, I guess that's, that is everything I have to cover for this video. So let me know if I missed anything. Uh, I'll come back and, you know, add an addendum, reshoot, add some notes. Okay. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.